Well hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be removing this Cosworth replica inlet manifold and replacing it with this rather lovely mount tune version. So the first step is going to be removing some of the parts from the engine bay, beginning with the mount tune cold air intake, taking off the bolts around the outside and at the back. Next up we're going to go after the cold air intake itself, so just pop off uh, the breather hose on the top and undo the hose clamps onto the silicon. So it's all about creating access so you can get that manifold out, pulling it forward into one side. So now we need to go after the bottom half of the air box as secured by a single bolt. And now we're onto the throttle body, again four bolts around the outside. and the clip there for the throttle control sensor. Just pop that off, and away it comes. Now with a bit of added overhead lighting as we're heading into the evening, losing a bit of the natural light, we're gonna try and make a bit more space. So the next step is to try and remove um, some of the hoses, the dipstick, and getting in to access some of the bolts Believe me, one or two of these are really difficult to access and you can't actually see them at all when you're working on them. So I've got a couple of vacuum hoses that are stuck on the inlet at the moment. So uh, why not give it a bit of the old hog tour and chuck on a bit of silicon lube. Um, I'll show you. So down here, you can see this is one of the back lines. This is another one up here. Up the top, um, if you put a little squirt on there and then jiggle the pipe side to side, it should come free. pops off very nicely, no problems at all. And again, just undoing those hose clamps onto the, the vac line on the top and wiggling that one free. Now let's go after those pesky bolts. I'm gonna to need to get some access underneath. Okay, welcome to the underside of my Fiesta. Um, it's still covered in Goodwood Fessel of Speed mud in certain places, so that obviously adds some kudos. The radiator cooling fan needs to come off to give greater access to remove the inlet. Once that's out of the way, uh, we can then get up into the bracketry, which is up in there. And we're going to be using the force to undo all the bolts because you can't actually see them. So we're going to be feeling for bolts, breaking the torque and then getting those out. So it's a really, uh, a really tricky job. Make sure, like I've done over here, I've got an axle stand and I've got my jack next to it, just in case something goes wrong. Um, so I've got that extra level of security. I don't want to get squished to death when I'm working on this. Suggest you do the same. Uh, no, that's not rust. That's Goodwood mud. Absolutely everywhere. Right. Um, down the side of the chassis rail on the shocks. It's my own fault. I shouldn't have been enjoying the car park so much. So now with a radiator fan out of the way, we can move on to the dipstick. There's just a single bolt securing this onto the bottom. And now it's death by a thousand cuts. I'm having to use every trick in the book. Use a little bit of the ring spanner, use a bit of the open spanner, flip that over to the other side, all to get about, I don't know, 10 or 15 degrees rotation out of this bolt. And uh, you should probably spend a good 10 minutes getting this one out. And now the thing is loose and it's ready to pull out to one side. I've got a really long PCV hose on here, that's my personal preference just to make installation a little bit easier. And I've got the two parts side by side on the floor. Plug up those holes with a couple of tissues to stop things crawling in in the night. So it's literally taken two and a half hours to do one bolt. Uh, the one that was in the right corner, my favourite friend, I tried every socket, every extension covered in goo, I've got cuts all over my hands, but at least we're ready to go for the install tomorrow. Don't forget the oil in your face as well. <laughs> right, let's call it a night. Well, welcome back to day two of the install. Um, I was up till a well past midnight last night getting everything installed, but I'm very excited to crack on with the build today. 
So what we're going to look at is the choice of the thermal inlet gasket first, and then we'll start prepping the inlet for install. There's a few brackets and things to fit. A little bit of RTV sealer on the interface, and then we can crack on. So this is the plastic gasket that was supplied with the inlet when I bought it second hand. Uh, but I've already got a nice Faraday engineering one that's already attached to the car, so I'm thinking I might just reuse that, to be honest. There's no change to the interface. Um, in fact, I'm probably happier with this one because there's no cutout where the uh, uh, gas recirc would be. So I think that's probably uh, the best choice. We'll go with that one for now. Probably not in the bin. I will try and clean this up and uh, I'll pop it up for you guys. If you're interested, uh, send me a message. So the only bit I'm wanting to harvest off the old inlet is uh, the map sensor you see here. So I'll take that off and transfer that over onto the, uh, the mounting inlet. The other thing I've got is a nice bag of goodies um, containing all the brackets and bolts and everything that are needed to install. Um, so I think this is the lower support bracket onto the engine block uh, to stop the inlet moving around. Uh, it's not that heavy, but it's more of a fatigue thing. You don't want to be cracking the casting or damaging the head with the weight of that. Um, so yeah, it's uh, all coming together. Got a track day coming up in August, so I'm looking forward to trying it out again. I'll do a few onboard shots of that, and uh, we're off to Jam Sport uh, for a remapping session in a few days' time. So I'm hoping to be able to do some back-to-back -back comparisons of the Fiesta with the old inlet, the new inlet, and, and before the cams and remap were fitted. So hopefully a bit more torque. Um, I don't know if I'll push the rev limit any higher. I'll probably keep it where it is for now because I don't want to blow the thing up. Power-wise, it might be a little bit of a gain. I mean, obviously it's been a CFD designed part. I'll show you some pictures of that in a moment. So the performance is coming from the optimized run lengths. You can see these are actually quite a lot longer than they are. You're probably only talking about, I don't know, six or seven inches long on the um, the standard cast Cosi Rep type inlets, whereas the mounting ones are a lot longer. Uh, I understand there's a design principle where you have to look at the bouncing um, of a pressure wave back from the engine into the inlet and you can use that to enhance the, the air draw and the power that you get so I think they've clearly done a little bit more engineering on that. So to avoid any vacuum leaks I'm using a little bit of sealer on the threads of the bolts and they're being installed just to keep everything nice and snug and again it prevents against fretting. Doing exactly the same thing here on the head support bolt and onto the bracket. Now cleaning the PCV, really important step not to be overlooked because it is an absolute nightmare trying to get the hose to clamp onto that if you haven't given it a good degrease and a wipe over first. Here's a standard PCV, I'll probably be updating that a bit later on along with all the ancillary hoses. Just make sure you've got that trunking in place to prevent any fretting on the hose. Now cleaning up the mating face onto the inlet itself. I'm going to run a bead of the RTV sealer. Put a few blobs in place just to help secure it onto the head. And I filled up a spare syringe I had lying around, you know, the sort you get free with your cow pole from the pharmacy. running a semicircle. Probably don't want me icing any birthday cakes. <laughs> hey, what a work of art. <laughs> so let's get the thing fitted onto the car. So we're going to start lowering it in on the right hand side. Make sure you've got the clamp in place on the PCV before you do so. And then when you're happy with the alignment you can then loosely tighten uh, the bolts on the top face, um, not fully, uh, but just enough to give a bit of a wiggle um, so you can then get underneath the car and do the lower bolts. But my goodness is access so much easier with this inlet. The bolt that took me two and a half hours last night to remove, I installed in probably less than 60 seconds uh, with the universal joint. This one on the other side again, really easy to access from the front. Arg. That cosy design just has no space at all, so you're working in tiny little confines. But there we go, one mounting inlet hardware installed and ready to rock and roll. Top tip as well, if you're trying to work on anything you can't see easily, pop the sockets on first and uh, you can then connect up to your drive. Installing the back lines and now giving the throttle body a little bit of love. You get a bit of oil uh, from the recirc going on there, so give that a nice clean off. Um, and I've also gone after a bit of the surface corrosion in the same way I did when I cleaned up the manifold. So hitting that with some degreaser and a scouring pad, 
just to take the worst of the, uh, the surface corrosion off. That's looking nice and clean. Now let's get it fitted on. We're now going to feed in um, the dipstick and secure that from underneath. Just a single bolt again. Selecting a favourite bolt to be used. For sheer pleasure, I'm now installing the bolt on the dipstick tube using a 10mm spanner. Not because I've lost all my 10mm sockets, they're, they're definitely here somewhere. Mmm, mechanical joy. Yes, my goodness. Do with some of those fancy twisty ring spanners here, yeah, maybe for another time. Right, that's all good. Nicely secured. Right, enter dipstick. Bon. That's much nicer than the old one. Now, posting that cold feed hose in, which has been hastily repaired with a bit of duct tape, uh, there's a single bolt to install. back the silicon hose and joiner and the crankcase breather. Again they just pop into place. You're doing your best to, to line up the clamp just to make sure that it looks pretty underneath even though you can't see it uh, so you don't get any pinching or any leaks. And the final bolt's going on. So mechanically I think we're ready to go. Okay, moment of truth, I'm gonna turn the key uh, before I get it off the jack, just to make sure I've done everything right. I've done it a few times. Sometimes you miss bits. Let's see how we go. First hit of the key. So far, so good. lights on the dash. Tidy up time. Seems to be idling well. Uh, no warning lights on the dash. Let's see how we go. Good God, that sounds incredible. Once you, once you get going with this thing, it roars. And I mean, the sound is very, very different. Have a listen. guys thanks very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed the install of the mountain inlet the next step is going to be getting up to jam sport for a remap i'm going to do a bit of a video about that but also a dyno comparison back to the cosy inlet and then back to stock and i'll update that video um, showing the full transition all the way through
move and the difference in torque. It's driving very nicely. Uh, I'm quite happy, even though it hasn't had the full sort of remap to the new inlet, it seems to be fine. So thank you once again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, comment below what you'd like to see in upcoming videos. For now.